actually start with the painting, today's lesson. Um, I've made a few changes, well one change, from yesterday and we'll actually go through that now. Um, if we go into our layers docker, you'll now see, as opposed to one layer with sky and water, I've separated it into two separate layers. Reason for that is I want to make a change to the sky without affecting the water. So we might as well make that change now. To me, the sky is looking a bit saturated. So I'm just going to bring, with the sky layer highlighted, I'm just going to bring the opacity of the sky down a bit. Brought it down to, I don't know, eight, eight, mid 80s percentage wise, just to take some of the vibrancy out of it. Okay, so that's that. Now, to start on with today's lesson, we need to add some highlights and some shape and form to the mountains that we've created. First thing we need to do, make sure we're on the mountains layer, like so. Okay, and also zoom in so that, you, you know, we've got the mountains at a reasonable size. Okay, next thing I want to do, I want, I'm going to bring up the digital colour mixer. I'm going to select white as my colour. Okay, now I'm just going to make the snow white. Sometimes Bob adds a tiny bit of phthalo blue into it and has a very, very pale blue, which would be maybe, maybe that, but no, I want to have white for my snow. Need to bring up the brush palette. And I'm going to choose my Bob Ross Mountain Knife Snow. Okay. Now I'm going to reduce the size of that a bit and choose a mountain to start on. Decide where your light source is coming from. My light source is actually coming from the right hand side. It's easier for me, I'm right handed. <laughs> so Go up to the top of the mountain, like so, and draw out the shape of where your peaks would be. Do that for every peak you have like so and then what we want to do is we want to pull those peaks out this is where we actually decide, decide what mountains are in front so pull the snow down as far as you want. You can see you, you can actually give in, you're giving some depth to your mountains as well. And any place you don't put snow will end up being a crack or a crevice. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now to the non-light side, we want to add some shadows, a shadow colour. So to our white, we're going to add some Prussian blue, just a tiny bit of Prussian blue. which will give it a greyish colour. And then on the other side, again, just drag down from the We're just putting shadow in. also go back to our white. Say we want to modify, for example, this mountain here. We want to make an outcrop. So we can just come up like that and bring it down there. Like so. But remember, anywhere we put an outcrop, there needs to be a touch of the shadow colour coming off of the other side. Put some shadow in here, and some shadow down here, like so. There. That's our mountain range. Save it. Remember, save often. I normally try to save after each step. So, now what we want to do is we want to create a mist at the bottom of those mountains. So we're going to change our brush to our sponge cloud brush. And I'm going to slightly decrease that in size. Make sure you've got white and on the same layer as the mountains, just dab in some white at the bottom. Don't need a lot. Basically, you're wanting a cloudy effect at the bottom. There. Like so. Now, change your brush to your blender. Increase the size a bit if you need to. You want it, let's say about, I've got it at about 176 pixels and just drag up from the white into the clouds, into the mountains. Gently using two hairs and some air. that all the way along. You're just creating a nice misty effect at the top at the bottom of the mountains, that's all. Shows that there's some clouds there. Take your time and do this. Like 
like so. Yeah. And if you want, you can also drag the bottom of that mist down. don't have to because it's going to be covered by foothills and the like anyway but you never know you might want to put another set of mountains in There's our mountains with our misty bottoms. <laughs> right, what we could do if we wanted is have another layer of mountains. So if you want to, create another layer. Call it Mountains 2. Wash. Again. Choose our mountain colour, change the brush to the mountain palette knife brush, and decide where you want your mountains. These ones are going to be closer. So just to, just maybe this just this side. So create make the brush a bit bigger. Start down here. And just add some colour in. Like so. It's exactly the same as doing the previous mountains. Change brush to our blender brush and drag. Decrease the size so that you can get into and just make sure you straighten all those. Edges slightly increase the and pull out. Like so. Okay. We have some more mountains. Slightly bigger. Again, we need to do exactly the same as before. We need to take note of where the light source is coming from. So we choose our snow brush. I'm going to just make it slightly bigger. And and put in where we think our oh. light light is going to come from.
So, go into our colour mixer. We want our shadow colour. So put your shadows in. Like so. Again, what we're going to do now is just add a tiny bit of mist to the bottom of those. Like so. Go back to our blender brush and blend that up. like so, until we've got a nice misty bottom to those. The purpose for that will become apparent in tomorrow's video when we start to add some foothills and some mid-ground elements. But there, you see, now we have two mountain ranges a foreground one and a background one, we can go into our layers palette, choose the mountains layer, decrease the saturation of that one to make it look like it's a bit further away. We decide we don't want the foreground mountains, we can leave the layer in there, but just hide it and they've gone. But I quite like them now, so I'm going to leave them. Okay, what we're going to do, tomorrow's video will be all about the foothills coming down into the midground, and we're going to try and create more aerial perspective. So please tune in it should be a good one. If you like what you're watching, if you think my content deserves it, please take two seconds and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, that way you will be notified when I post a new tutorial video and at present I'm trying to post one a day. So don't forget this is all about painting and animating in free software. So Critter, OpenTunes, Blender, anything that's free. You don't have to fork out for a um, Adobe Creative Cloud subscription to be able to do this. This is all being done with free software. So please, subscribe, like, comment do all the usual YouTube things. Thanks for watching guys and I shall see you tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. Bye!